Hi there, it's your favourite not a football trader here uh, with the final part of the Laying the Unders series I've been doing over the past week or so. Uh, just to quickly recap, we're looking at a strategy that predominantly uh, targets the over-unders 1.5 market uh, and in that where we uh, lay the unders at a set on odds, I've been using 1.5 for demonstration purposes and then we monitor the market, uh, and if the odds decay to 1.1, we use a green up function to green up across the board for a guaranteed loss. But if a goal is scored before that point is reached, we then use another green up function to monitor the market for those odds as they decay once again with no further goals being scored. And once that uh, decay has reached 1.5, i.e. our entry point, we use a green up option to scratch that particular trade. If a second goal is scored before either of those happen, uh, we win the full amount of money sitting on the overs uh, and everything's hunky-dory. So essentially what we're doing here is using a, uh, a moving stop-loss mechanism uh, to manage our position. Now some of you may be thinking, well, hang on a minute. Why not use the inbuilt trading functionality of Fairbot, whereby you can do a lay-to-back trade where you, your entry point is a lay, there's an automatic offset configured to place the back bet, and indeed there's an automatic stop loss mechanism, indeed a moving stop loss mechanism, which will move that stop loss as the odds in the market moves. Now yes, of course you can use that, and that's the purpose of this particular video. However, there are some things I wanted to flag up to you about that may put you off using that particular mechanism. So first of all, let's, let's add in another rule, and it is going to be lay to back, trade with stop loss. And that's going to be for in play, and the action is going to be lay to back. We've been using place a bet and popping in a lay bet. That's not what we want. We wish to use place a trade. So in here, let's just specify that we wish to use this on the over-unders 1.5 market. We wish to do it on the under 1.5 goals, and we wish to do a later back. Now we want to set the initial odds to 1.5, so this is exactly the same as we did in the other method. And now we need to specify an offset for the corresponding back bet to go in once our lay bet, our initial lay bet, is taken. And this is where you may start to find you have a problem. How big is this offset need to be? So, for example, if we just set it to, let's say, 20 ticks, if a goal is scored, the potential exists that the odds will move much more than 20 ticks which means that your offset bet will be taken. And that's fine, you'll be in profit by 20 ticks worth greened up across the board if you have the smart bet switched on, of course. But you'll miss out on the maximum possibility profit of um, when there's a second goal scored, which is the purpose of this particular strategy. So you may find yourself having to put in an offset that's really big in the hope that that initial goal doesn't move the odds that high up. And that's all well and good. However, if you then leave that offset bet sitting there and a second goal is scored, there is a possibility, albeit potentially remote, that depending on how quickly Betfair suspend the, uh, suspend the market, that that position might be taken as well. So again, you're in the same position. Okay, you've got a much bigger profit, but it's not as big as it could be or would have been um, if the second goal was scored the market, and the market was closed. So that's one thing that you need to consider. Now, you can set up a cancellation bet rule, which will monitor when the initial lay is matched and then go in and cancel any pending offset bets. 
So that's one way around that particular issue, but it's an issue that you need to be aware of. So certainly if you're going to use this mechanism, I would set that to a, a silly number, um, uh, you know, even, even as high as 500, and that should cover you quite well, but keeping in mind that you may want to cancel that pending offset bet. But the issues aren't uh, finished there, because you also need to specify a stop loss. Now we can set up a stop loss here. Now in the example I've been using, our entry point is 1.5 and our stop loss is 1.1. So that's a 40 tick offset. So what we want to do is place our offset at 40 ticks, but we want to trigger, to trigger it at 38 to make sure that the offset when it's placed actually gets marked. Uh, and again, we can set up a trailing stop loss uh, and put in smart bets for that as well. Now, that'll do the same thing. Once the odds drop to a 1.1, the trailing stop loss will kick in and uh, red up across the field. Now, if a goal is scored before that point is hit, and after our 1.5 lay bet is taken, the odds will clearly jump. Now, we don't know how far they're going to jump. We can have a rough idea, but we don't know how far we're going to jump because it will depend on when that goal happens after our initial 1.5 is taken. By way of an example, let me just let me just assume that the odds jump up to two. They will jump up higher than that, but for the sake of keeping my mental arithmetic uh, easy, let's just consider that. So the gap between our entry point at 1.5 and where those odds jump up to, 2, is 50 ticks. Now our offset is set to 40 ticks, but we've got a trailing stop loss. Now that means that that offset will then move from 1.1 up 50 ticks to 1.6. So in this particular point uh, example, what we have is the offset, the second offset in the event of a goal having been scored, is no longer at the initial entry point. It's actually slightly higher. So if that stop loss is then matched, it will green up, and it will green up for a small profit as opposed to a scratch. But what you're doing is that, that point, of course, will be reached earlier than our original scratch point would be reached. In other words, you are reducing the size of the window in which a second goal can occur. And of course, although I'm using two here, in all likelihood those odds will jump up much higher, possibly over, over three, which means that that stop loss will be triggered much, much sooner than desired. So again, what you may have to think about doing is checking where your stop loss winds up after a goal is scored and essentially deleting it and putting in another one manually. So although you can use this mechanism, there's other things that you need to consider and other things that you would need to do. Okay, um, so let me just cancel this and let you, I shouldn't bother canceling that, let me just bring up another one. Let me just go to the action one, and what you're going to do is look at the cancel bets, or cancel bets on selection. So what you're going to do is the same thing, select where your bets are, which are going to be on the over under 1.5, and it's going to be by name, and it's going to be under 1.5, and this is the settings that you would choose. So for example, after your lay bet is matched, you can cancel your pending offset bet by using this mechanism here. And it's going to be a back bet, so you can remove that. Um, and you can get rid of those two and cancel the pending offset. So that's one option you can have for there. And similarly, you'll probably guess from here, you can use this mechanism also to cancel your pending stop loss after the goal has been scored. So in my opinion, Doing that is a much messier way of achieving the same ends as outlined here. But by all means, give it a go, set it up, see how you, how you like it. Um, but uh, for now, I think we'll just leave that as it is. If you try this out, let me know how you get on. As I say, I'm not a football trader, so I won't be testing this in the, 
in the real market, but I would be interested in finding out if uh, the videos that I've shown you uh, are actually useful to you. Okay, remember to subscribe, hit the hit the bell, and all those good things, and I'll catch you in another one. Cheers.